Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Ah, we're live in one of my favorite subjects here. <laughs> This is uh, Think Tech Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel, and, and I believe that the community of Honolulu, um, like, like any society, is a function of how well you can get around. Transportation is critical. It's right up there at the top of our priorities. We cannot you know, have a good economy. We cannot have a good society. We cannot do what we want to do without transportation. There's a lot of talk about transportation these days. At this table, we have transportation people coming in from all sides, talking about the modern view of transportation. And indeed, you know, Hawaii and Honolulu especially, we're, we're sort of on the cusp of a new world of transportation mm -hmm. because of the technology. And I was going to tell you guys, forgive me one minute more, I want to tell you guys that Technology is our middle name. We, we've been in business now, so to speak, a nonprofit for 18 years, and um, we follow technology. We love technology. We love disruptive technologies. And the only really sad thing is that Uber was not invented here. <laughs> <laughs> we would have really liked that. <laughs> but it is changing the world. Tabitha Chow, hmm. you're changing the world, aren't you? Welcome to our show. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Tabitha, Tabitha is the, is the um, Uber Senior Operations Manager. I wish I had your job. <laughs> and Wes Sakamoto was the driver for Uber yes. and, a, and a concerned citizen yeah, at the same yes, time. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so thank you for coming down, both of you. Thank you. Thank so you. tell us about Uber. Give us a, sort of the lay of the land. What is Uber? And it has had remarkable success. It is truly the, a perfect example of disruptive technology that is making life better wherever it goes. Yes, I mean, I think you just did a great intro right there. But um, so Uber, it's it's an app that you know you get on your smartphone, and it allows you to get a ride at a tap of a button in a matter of min minutes. Yeah, I've had that experience. Can I talk about my experience? Okay. <laughs> then you can talk about how you you address my experience. Sure, yeah. sure. So I want to go. Uh, I want to go anywhere, mm -hmm. a few blocks or a few miles. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm getting out of the elevator here at the Pioneer Plaza, I, I bring up my Uber app and mm -hmm. I say I want to ride. Mm -hmm. Okay. Immediately, there's a thing showing all the Uber drivers within how many blocks, and it says, you know, you're going to have a ride in a minute. Mm -hmm. like, a minute? You know, this is not possible with conventional taxi Taxis, cabs. Yes. Never was. Never will be. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. And and, and I say, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take a minute. <laughs> send, send the Uber. And one minute later, there's a guy right there. And he says, Jay. And I say, Marvin. <laughs> because now we know each other. Exactly. He knows who I am. I know who he is. Okay. <clears throat> I get in the car. He knows where I'm going. Uh, you know, I mean, I, could, I do always have a nice chat with the Uber driver, but I don't have to because he knows where I'm going. And when I get there, you know, this, this happened the first time. I said, what do I owe you? you know, okay, give me my credit card. What do you want, cash? What do you want? He said, no, 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 all done. I said, what about the tip? Mm, all done. And just get out of the car. It's quite amazing. It's effortless, as smooth as silk. Mm -hmm. How is it from the driver's side, Wes? It's just that simple. I mean, I get the request. I go to that spot. It's, it's just sometimes it's hard to find the exact spot because of the mapping. But, and then I know the person's name. And sometimes their photo is there. Yeah, but I know the person's name. And so I go up there and I say, you know, whatever, let Jay. Jay, I'm Wes, and then I wrote on my window, and then they jump in. Yeah. Yeah, and then then the app will tell me where they're headed to, and then I just take them there and I drop them off, and same thing. I said bye, and you know they go on their way. Yeah. Uh, you make friends. Yeah. No, I've made a number of friends actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's really fun, to be honest. It's really yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. And I, I tell my wife, I, I like doing it. I mean, it's a great part-time thing. I yeah. mean. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's a, an app about the size of your thumbnail in your, in your iPhone yeah, or that's your that, Android. That, that's about it. Yeah. It's an app. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Why didn't I have that idea? <laughs> <laughs> so so this, is, this, this works for you. Yeah. You uh -huh. have a good time. You meet people. You, know, you, you, you satisfy people. Yeah. You give them a break in, in their daily yes. life. Yes, I do. You, you're rendering service. There's a gratification uh -huh. in that. And um, I, you know, I must say that it's a, it's a good mm, experience. For both sides, this is you know, another indication, mm -hmm. both sides of the equation. Um, and, and it also allows you to have that part-time job. Yeah. And you get in an Uber cab, it's somebody local. 
It's we're not talking like, about somebody from Des Moines. It's somebody local who's doing it. This is the, the people. This is the democratization of the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the nice thing, too, is that sometimes I become tour guide being in Hawaii. And that happened yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah? I, and once you take them around? Yeah, no, I picked them up at the AF Pier in, by my house in Kaneohe. And then they, uh, of course, the shortest route was going through the Palitano. And they asked, oh, can you take us around the island? So I took them around Makapu. I mean, it was a nice conversation with this couple. I stopped at Makapu Lookout. They took pictures. I stopped at the Loho Lookout. They took pictures. <laughs> I took them back to their hotel. And they loved it. That's not going to happen in a conventional camp. Yeah, that's, that won't. <laughs> that yeah. won't. Furthermore, now this goes to a conversation we'll have about surge pricing. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, if I get out of the Pioneer Plaza building uh, on a dark street uh, in the middle of the night, I'm going to get that, that Uber cab anyway, mm -hmm. and because um, he's around, because he's incentivized to be around. Jeez, yeah. And there are some Uber drivers that really want that 3 o'clock in the morning experience. <laughs> yes. And I want them to be there. Uh -huh. Try a conventional cab at 3 o'clock in the morning and see what happens. I to never you. did. You won't be able to. <laughs> my, my wife and I took a trip a few months ago to uh, Australia. We went to Sydney, Melbourne, and, um, and um, uh, Tasmania, Hobart, Tasmania. And each one of those three places, we took everything with Uber. And it, awesome. was, it was awesome. a joy. I mean, it was, it was just a great way to get around. Mm -hmm. And just like you, Wes, you know, it, the, the driver would say, hey, can I show you some stuff? Let me take you around. And it was, it was like we, we had a friend in Hobart that we didn't know we had. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so tell us about the argument going on in the city council, because there are those who don't like you. There are those who would oppose <laughs> you and try to pull out your wings on every occasion, who come up with the silliest arguments to make you go away because you threatened them. Tell us about it, Tabitha. Uh, definitely. So uh, right now at the city council, there's Bill 35. And it was introduced by Honolulu Council Chair Ernie Martin. And what this bill does is it really tries to push Uber into an outdated taxi cab model. And when I say outdated, I don't even mean today's taxi cab model. I'm talking about the taxi cab model from decades ago that was actually already repealed for taxi cab drivers in Honolulu. So it's bringing back regulations that have already been repealed. And it makes things harder for not only Uber and Lyft and you know rideshare platforms, but, but also taxi, taxi companies as well. It's called shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your words, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, it would make ride sharing less affordable, less reliable, and less convenient. Yeah. That's a real problem because what we have, we're on a roll here. I mean, I, I was listening to uh, Wayne Yoshioka's piece uh, um, on Hawaii Public Radio. That's where we came from, Hawaii mm -hmm. Public Radio. Um, and he was talking about uh, the last uh, hearing in uh, the city council. And uh, he pointed out that for for every one person who came there to support that this Bill 35, um, there were four people who supported Bill, I mean, who opposed Bill 35. So clearly, Uber has the you know, the, the public is on Uber's side of this equation. It's an uphill thing. And, and you know, it, it, what it is, is is rational technology, the sign of the future, you know, versus somebody who wants to go back to the past and rely on old chums and political man manipulations in order to stop you. This is exactly what Hawaii does not need <laughs> at all. I could not agree more. <laughs> um, you know, oftentimes this bill is sold as a consumer protection bill. You know, we're, we're trying to, uh, we're concerned about public safety and protecting consumers. But the reality is there have been zero complaints about Uber or Lyft since the city became our regulator more than a year ago. And so, you know, the public's not asking for this bill. They're really not. It's It was really introduced at, you know, the urging of a handful of not even taxi cab drivers, but taxi cab company owners. Yeah, that's what it is. They have an investment in the cabs. They don't want to lose the investment. They know that the Uber model doesn't require an investment. You know, it's, it's sort of the perfect model, actually. Everybody wins because the, the driver, like Wes, is having the car anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll, you know, encourage you to keep the car in spiffy shape, too. Yeah. I'm sure it does because yeah. you want that. Um, and, um, you know, the, the investment is, uh, well, there, there is no investment. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an app the size of my thumbnail. Exactly. That's what it is. And, that's and it makes the world go right. 
around, yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, for for Uber drivers, I mean, Wes is here, he can speak to, <laughs> to you know, his own personal story, but what we hear most often is that drivers appreciate the flexibility of the Uber app. So like you said, you know, with some traditional taxi cab companies, the way the models work is you pay, you know, sometimes up to $1,000 a week just to use someone, you know, a fleet owner's taxi cab and, you know, just have their name there so that you can get those street hails. Um, the so taxi cab company owner could it, get rich that way off the back of the driver, may I say. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, I mean, these drivers are just, you know, trying to dig themselves out of a hole every single week. Whereas with Uber, you know, drivers are using their own personal vehicles and everything's been checked. You know, there's, there's still rigorous background checks. You, we, we make sure that all of their vehicle documents are up to date. Uh, these are safe vehicles, uh, but you know, you, you have the flexibility to drive really whenever you want. You don't have to tell us when you mm -hmm. want to drive, you know. And Wes, earlier we were we were talking and he said, you know, it says on the app that I've been driving for a year and a half, um, but I only recently started driving again a few months ago. And that's kind of the beauty of it. If you want to take a six month hiatus, yes, you, you can. can. Just make yeah. sure if you, you know, if any of your documents expire, just re-upload them and you can start again. The ultimate expression of the most desired gig economy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's really about flexibility. That's what it is. So, Wes, you wrote a, you wrote a piece, uh, it was a letter to the editor of the uh, Hunger yeah, Star uh, yeah. Can you just summarize that letter for us? Well, because it was on, I, I was kind of introduced to the Bill 35 by accident. I, I heard about it. Um, actually, I wasn't even active with the, the Facebook group that the drivers have. So, I and I wrote that piece mainly to the city council. I just cc'd the letter to the editor on that. Um, and the whole thing is that you know they want to. Well, they picked up your letter. Yes. You said it were carbon copy. They loved it so much. <laughs> yeah, that, okay. it was only a carbon copy to the Star <laughs> Advertiser. And so my whole thing was, you know, you want to regulate us, and that what there's other things about surge pricing that in other industries it always happens. You know, airline tickets go up during Christmas. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You don't want to ask the guy next to you on the plane what he's paying because you know it won't be the same as what you're paying. Yeah, and then, example, restaurants, they charge higher for dinner prices. A lot of restaurants, they have a dinner menu and a lunch menu, but the food is the same. Yeah. So, sure. so you know, those type of things happen in normal commerce business, but then in our situation, you know, it's the same thing. There's, there's a high demand. And so the prices tend to go up, like in any other industry. Um, real estate is another example. When people want to live in Kahala and the prices just skyrocketed, and nobody complains about it. Right. It's the market. <laughs> it's the market. It's and, the market. And that's an essential element of our capital society. Yeah, it's the it's market. It's the market. So I, that's why I say just let the market do its thing and have the consumer choose. If we're too high at that time, tell them to take a cab. I mean, they, they can choose to take the cab. Yeah, let me add a point. When I yeah. take my Uber rides and it tells me that Wes is a block away, yeah. It also says what it's going to cost me mm -hmm. before I push the I want a ride button. So I know exactly what it is. And it's so easy for me to push the back button and say no. no. I don't say no. I say yes. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's a perfect example of, of a free market society where you can say no. If you, if you don't like it, if that's too high for you, go somewhere else at 3 o'clock in the morning. No, that, that's <laughs> what I mean. I mean, let the consumer, you just educate the consumer that they can always say no. There's, there's the bus and there's the conventional cab. Yeah, yeah. Or they can call their mom and tell them to pick them up. I mean, the same thing. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, we, we really believe in price transparency. And so that's why you see your price before you even decide whether or not you want to take the ride. Um, and one of the big things in this bill is, is capping surge pricing. And, you know, it's it, like you said, this is free market economics at work. And so it's really troublesome when, when the government steps in and tries to regulate the pricing. And with Honolulu taxi pricing, it's historically been controlled by the city. City. And what happens when when the city is controlling the pricing is that drivers will or taxi cab companies will choose to charge the max they can. And so they're always they have the option to, to charge less if they'd like to. Um, but all of the taxi companies are charging the max. And Which Honolulu, is almost twice as much as what Uber generally exactly. charges. Ninety percent of the time Uber is forty percent cheaper than a Honolulu taxi. In fact, Honolulu taxis are the highest priced taxis in the nation. And so we have, you know, we have 
city council, and I mean, it's not everyone in the city council, but this bill, I'll, I'll address the bill in particular. This bill is, you know, trying to put Uber's pricing model into a taxi cab model where we already know that these taxi cabs are the most expensive in the nation. And so we really believe in serving the community and offering affordable, reliable rides to people. And it really doesn't work with this model. Yeah, and not only that, but when you get in a taxi cab, conventional taxi cab, I, I remember I was a taxi cab driver in the, right. in the 60s. <clears throat> I may not look that old, but I am old. <laughs> the, the guy would, the, the driver would flip the flag, okay, mm -hmm. big flag, clunk, okay, it would start ticking, right? You didn't have any idea what it was going to yep. cost you at the beginning of the ride. You had no clue. And if you went the wrong way, got lost, decided they're going to take you round and round, some of them did, okay? It could be it could be incredibly expensive, much more expensive than it should have been. And so this is really refreshing to see that app come up and say it's going to cost you $6 to go there. We know what it's going to cost you. You know it's going to cost you. And you can get out of the cab with confidence knowing that your, you know, your, your charge will be on your credit card, it'll be exactly what we promised you mm -hmm. at the beginning. That is truly amazing. So amazing that I get excited about it. I get emotional about it. Can you tell? And when I get emotional like this, we take a break. Let's take a break. Okay. <laughs>I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live. I got up over my emotional reaction to this <laughs> <laughs> with uh, uh, Wes, uh, Wes Sakamoto, an Uber driver, uh, and uh, Tabitha Chow. She's an Uber senior operations manager right here in Honolulu. That yeah, is something. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to talk about vision. I talked about you know what it looks like going forward, and I and I to to sort of set the stage for this, I tell you we talk to the Department of Transportation all the time, we talk to the Energy Policy Forum, we talk to Hawaiian Electric um, about the future of transportation, and you know we know it's electric, we know it's um, you know it's 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 cars that are electric, but it may be you know time slice cars, mm -hmm. uh, it may be you know it may be automated cars, I suspect it will be. And it may be automated cars that are time sliced, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, Uber. Uh, if, if I can think ahead like that, and the, these guys in Hawaiian Electric and the Department of Transportation can think ahead, so can Uber. So is Uber. Uber has got a lot of ideas on the plate. And I, uh, first, I'd like to explore, you know, all the things that you're, you're looking at, corporate-wise, uh, about transportation in the future on a national, international basis. Absolutely. I mean, we. It, you know, we're a technology company, and so we're constantly thinking of ways that, you know, we can be right there at the forefront of technology. And so, you know, we're heavily invested in autonomous vehicles, and, you know, it's something that we're testing around the nation. It's, it's a really exciting, exciting thing, you know. If, um, so there's autonomous vehicles, and you know something that we're also exploring are, um, you know, these. Basically, I guess the best way to describe it is is sort of like a large drone that 
you can fit in. And so what we're doing is we're working with cities right now. We're working with LA and um, I believe it's Houston in Texas, a city in Texas. Um, and we're working with the city planners there and you know the, the departments, the govern governor's offices there to, to really figure out how can we solve these transportation problems. And I mean, that's not just in th these cities. We're, you know, we're working with cities around the world to help solve these problems. But in those cities, particularly exciting, you know, within the next few years, we really hope to to bring to market this option where you can go to the top of a building and you know catch your your Uber ride, fly over traffic, and land in another another building. Is I it mean, autonomous? Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll start out with having some pilots right there. But this is your new future. That's my new future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll, there'll be pilots there in the beginning, and you know, as we're testing and making sure that you know everything's working as it should. Um, but yeah, that's definitely in the goal is autonomous, and yeah. it's a really exciting future. But you know, when you when you are innovative, then mm -hmm. you walk down the street, new ideas come to you. You mm -hmm. carve the marble, and there's a new idea right there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's right at your feet. It's something you should have thought of. Sometimes it's a few steps away, but you, if you have the right state of mind, and I think Uber does, then you're going to come on all these new ideas, you know. One of the things that struck me recently, I don't know if you're doing this, Wes, mm -hmm. is Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. Uber Eats. I love that idea. Uber Eats. You know, <laughs> you know? we are actually now, I, I believe our CEO just recently said that we are the largest food delivery service in at least the nation. I believe it's the nation. Um, and, you know, Uber Eats is a relatively new service for it, us. A, and a few months old. Yeah, right? yeah. And I mean, we're we're still learning, you know, like what's the best way to do this? Um, you know, what, what makes the best incentives for drivers? And how can we truly make this fit into people's lives and um, it's incredibly popular and I will say that you know working with uber I do get some uber credits every month they now that we have uber eats here in Honolulu all of my credits go to uber eats I love it so much you know I'm constantly I mean I'm on now you know a first name basis with some of these restaurants and um, I love it I love uber eats yeah. well it strikes me that if I wanted to have a picnic you know say say at uh, Alamo Park, Park just for example and I could arrange this through Uber Eats to have them deliver the food to me yeah. from any restaurant that I choose with any menu that I choose. I mean, think of the, think of the incredible, you know, party I would have in Alamo <laughs> Park that way. <laughs> so I mean, this is this beautiful idea, and it fits right in. You know, it's just an example of this kind of you know constant innovation, always new ideas, and and all these new ideas are for the benefit of the community. They all work. They work for the drivers. They work for the the customers. They work. For for the restaurants too. Mm -hmm. it's, a, exactly. it's that thing about the facilitation of, of transportation in our community makes our community a better, more livable place. But going back to multimodal, so we got walking, we got cycling, we got, we got cars in one or the other iteration. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, we have the rail. Yep. <laughs> you know. um, I, what did I miss? Did I miss something? Buses. buses. I missed buses, which are important. Mm -hmm. um, so where is it all going to go? Which, I, this is asking you for speculation, <laughs> you know, but w where is it going to go and what role is Uber going to play in sort of this, this, this landscape of the future, this, this pen and ink drawing of a future that will emerge for us? Um, you know, in say 20 years, what's what's it going to look like, and what role? What role are you going to play, Wes? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a young man. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could tell I was a young man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, 20 years. It's, it's crazy to think what could happen in 20 years, just knowing that Uber is still in its infancy, and uh, we do have some of the greatest minds that you know exist. I, I've met some of the most smart, like the smartest, most hardworking people I've ever met in my life just working at this company. Um, but I mean, the way that we, we sort of see ourselves is, is really as a platform for, for various types of um, technology, or for various types of transportation. And so, uh, you know, right now we have UberX, we have the higher um, models, which are Uber Select. And then, you know, in some, some cities, we also have bike options. Um, and really, the future, as we see it, is Uber as a platform, and um, I think it's a really exciting. Yeah, you have a, you have a, a database of devoted customers. Mm -hmm. You have a database of devoted drivers. Mm -hmm. You have a database of <clears throat> devoted restaurants. <laughs> yep. And maybe retail in general. You know. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it's very promising. 
And so the question is, when you look at this beautiful picture, I, I consider it a sort of a, a renaissance mm -hmm. of, about any given city when you let this unfold. Uh, and then you compare that with the, the struggle that, is, uh, that has been created by the people trying to put you out of business. Because it's as simple as that. What they're doing, had you noticed, is trying to put you out of business. Um, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's awful. And uh, I just, what, what do you think is going to happen here? What are we facing here? Because you know, it's like the ghost of Christmas future. <laughs> what is our city without Uber and Lyft and the like? Of these of the ride-hailing companies, what is the future of our city without you? <laughs> so I mean, you know, one of the the things that we really think about too is, you know, we don't see taxi as you know our competitor. We see that we're all a part of this transportation ecosystem, and really, what we're competing with is car ownership. You know, like in in many cities where Uber is just a minute away, people are giving up their vehicles. Kids aren't even getting their driver's license anymore. The thought of drinking and driving doesn't even cross people's minds anymore. Those who use Uber often, right. and just that recently, whole problem gone. Exactly. Just recently, um, Maui PD. You know, they've they've done study over the past few years. They've had a huge decline and DUIs and you know they're doing some efforts on their parts but they credited Uber services like Uber for a lot of that decline you know and they when they have these checkpoints they see so many Uber drivers now in the front seat and they see who's in the back seat and they're like thank God that Uber is here and so um, really there's there's so many things that can be done and you know we have we have a military product here we have assist which is um, where drivers have taken a test to specifically pe help people who need extra assistance. So you learn how to fold a wheelchair properly and store it and, you know, really just... Training. Exactly. And so we're, we're always trying to find ways that we can better integrate into the community. And here in Hawaii, you know, traffic's crazy. And so when you're competing with car ownerships and we have a product called Uber Pool, it's not yet in Honolulu. What's it called? Uber Pool. Okay. And so the idea there is to just get more people into cars. And ah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just have more people in each of the seats in a that's, car. That's leverage for everybody involved. Exactly. And it's at a lower price. You know, you end up splitting the already 40% cheaper than a taxi price yeah. with, you know, with your neighbor. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's a really exciting future. Yeah. And meanwhile, you got to cope with all these silly arguments. I mean, I, I read enough to know that the thing with the uh, the attack and the knife was completely rank and utter <laughs> poppycock. Um, <laughs> you know, the thing with the with the, the pricing, the surge pricing, is also poppycock. Yep. It's any port in a storm to attack you. But my favorite one, and I want to close with this and ask your reaction, um, is the guy uh, I remember his name, but I won't mention it on the air. Uh, who owns a taxi cab company, who said, if Uber thinks we're making too much with these old rates, why don't they raise their rates too? Then the public, all the public will pay more and Uber will make more money. Doesn't Uber want that? Isn't Uber into profit? Why doesn't Uber just charge the public more? Won't that solve the problem? And I thought to myself, wow, that's really special. <laughs> so, that's... Let's gouge the public across the board, everybody. Um, and you know, that's not what you're about. Uh, that's exactly. What he's about. That's what he's about. <laughs> exactly. I mean, unfortunately, it's an argument that we've heard from many of the taxi cab owners. Why don't you just raise your pricing? And you know, we're trying to serve the community here, and people appreciate that Uber is affordable. And uh, yeah, it is. It's very frustrating because you know they'll say that, and then this next second say that we're not serving our community and we're not you know helping the elderly or those who are on low income. And it's just how can you say that when you know you're also telling us to. To charge more to these very people. That was the most ridiculous it's, argument. It's very that frustrating. That shows you how how desperate <laughs> how desperate these people are yeah. to attack you this way. What they should do is look at your model and try to adapt their operation to your model. You said that in your letter. Right? Yeah, yeah. That would be a better idea. Yeah, for them. yeah better if they had, they get their own technology and yeah. do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So we're at the end of our time, and I'd like to offer you guys the you know the opportunity to, to leave a message with our audience. See the red light. So Wes, you go first. <laughs> what would you like people to remember about you being here and about this subject? Um, that you know the, the the opportunity to drive for Uber has been very, I guess. 
uh, very, it, it, it very rewarding for me because I just wanted some side income. And instead of working for someone, I mean, I've, I've always got offered because I'm a golfer to work part time as a cart guy at a golf course. Um, but then this allowed me to work anytime I want. And that's what, that was the nice thing about it. I work anytime I want. I, when I want to quit, I just quit. And then the pay is pretty decent for a part-time gig. Yeah, that is a signing bonus now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, there always was. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> there always so you know what I'm hoping for, Wes? When I get out of Pioneer Plaza here yeah. and I call up my Uber application, and lo and behold, it's you. <laughs> Well, I got to refer you on my app to, to, to get it. And you drive down the street, and, and I say hi, Wes, and you say hi, Jay. I'm waiting for that moment. <laughs> It'll be a reunion. Okay, your 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 turn, Tabitha. What would you like to leave with people? There's camera one. Um, I mean, really, I just want people to know that. We, we are committed to Honolulu, and we love being here. And there are more than 3,000 local drivers who drive with Uber. And there are hundreds of thousands of riders who use Uber every single month. And 70% of them live here in Honolulu. And so I, I just want everyone to know that you know we, we are committed, and we're going to fight to stay here. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. <laughs> Thank you, Tabitha. Thank you so much. Tabitha Chow. Thank you, Wes. Jay. Thank nice you, Jay. To, Nice to see you. Nice meet you. I know yeah. we'll meet again. Okay. <laughs>